All right, everyone, Mr. Rops. And Mr. Coe. And we are now going to do the negative indice rules. Okay, and to do it, we're going to develop a pattern. I love patterns. Patterns, patterns, patterns. If I look at this pattern, I go 16, 8, 4, 2, 1, 1 half. What's the next term going to be, Mr. Cole? I reckon a quarter. Nice. And the next one? One eighth. And the next one? One sixteenth. Okay. Each time we divide it by two. Okay. But I could take this pattern, I can rewrite this pattern differently. Because I recognize that 16 is the same as 2 to the fourth. 8 is the same as 2 cubed. 4 is the same as 2 squared. 2 is the same as 2 to the power 1. 1 is the same as 2 to the power 0. Now what's 1 half going to be the same as then? As 2 to the negative 1. Right. If I look at the pattern, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, the pattern exists. And so this is going to be 2 to the negative 2, 2 to the negative 3, 2 to the negative 4. So to generalize this, if I have something, let's say, 1 over 3, if I want to change that to a negative indice, that's the same thing as saying 3 to the negative 1. Or if I had, let's say, 4 to the negative 2, well, that negative means it's from the bottom. It means it's 1 over 4 squared, which is 1 over 16. And so what our general rule says, if I have a to the minus n, that's the same thing as saying 1 over a to the n. There's the big rule. Another way I can think about it is if I have 1 over a, let's, uh, let's say if I have this over this, then the negatives on the bottom, it switches it around and becomes a squared. So there's two negatives all together and it cancels them out. The negative flips it around. Okay. okay. So negative means it goes on the bottom. Double negative means it goes back to the top. Let's try, uh, we generalized our result. Let's try an example. So if I look at this scenario, 3 to the negative 2. Okay, so that's 1 over 3 squared. Okay, or 1 over 9. 1 over 9. If I think about this one, okay. the negative switches it around. So if I it flips my fraction. It goes 1 over 1 tenth squared. Okay. Which, if I flip, I have to divide it 1 times 10 over 1, flipping my fraction squared, which ends up being 100. I can think of it another way, too. I think it's an easier way to think about, if it's negative, I could say this is 1 to the negative 2 over 10 to the negative 2. And so I have to, this goes to the bottom, be 1 squared. This negative 2 flips up to the top 10 squared, which is 100 over 1, which is 100. How do you see doing these there, Mr. Cole? What do you um, So I think just the negative means it's the reciprocal. So if you go back to the one before, so you had, um, what, 3 to the negative 2? 3 to the negative 2. So the reciprocal of 3 is 1 over 3? Over 3. And then that all squared is, that, that squared is 1 over 3 squared, which over. is, and then when you do it with the other one, it's the reciprocal of um, 1 tenth, which is 10. All right, so if I do the reciprocal of that, that's becoming 10. That's taken, uh, that's done the negative sign, and now we've still got the 2. Then we go that way. So there's lots of ways to interpret what that negative sign means, but however you do it, it always ends up the same. I like this. Let's do some harder okay. examples now. Okay, so now we're going to answer where the exponents belong to the set of z to plus. The set z is integers. Okay. The plus sign means positive integers. So I want exponents to be positive integers. So we just want nice whole, whole numbers. All right. So we have to use some of our rules from the, the other day. So in doing this first one, let's combine the top together. Okay. When I multiply them with common bases, I add my exponents. So that's negative 7 over a to the minus 3. 
Okay, and then we need to take away because we're dividing, right? All right, so a to the negative 7, subtract negative 3, which is a to the negative 4. four. So we're going up 3 from negative 7. Which is then 1 over a to the 4th. Okay, and now I've got my exponent yes. um, as a positive whole number. That's why we needed to put it on the bottom. Right. Another way I could have done it from here, sometimes what I do is I switch it around because I don't like negatives. I switch them around. I do the reciprocal, so I make this positive. I make this positive. And then I go, well, there's three on the top. Makes one, and there's four left on the bottom. So I got one over a to the four. So that's another way to think about it. Okay. B part. Quite challenging here. Let's pull our terms together and then we'll simplify. So they'll take off the parentheses on the top. So I get 2 times 3 is 6. a to the minus 5 times a. There's a 1 up here. Yep, a to the power of 1. So it's, ne what do we have to do? Add negative 5 and, and 1. And the 1 yep. makes negative 4 and a b squared. And that is over 12 a squared b to the 5th. Okay, so now we can do a bit of simplifying. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to blue. I like blue better. I'm going to simplify that. becomes a 1 and a 2. Yep. And I'm going to make this negative positive first because I like to work with them all together with positive values. So I'm going to send that to the bottom. So the top has b squared. The bottom has the 2. Send this to the bottom. So I have a to the 4th, a squared, b to the 5th. Now I can simplify these things here. I know I can say, uh, oh, let me get some space. I can say b squared over to add my exponents, a to the sixth, b to the fifth. Make these it. will cancel. Subtract those, I end up with three. So there's a one up top, two, a to the sixth, b. Cute.